Wow, what a lineup we have for you today. Okay, Daniel Crouch is going to be here toward the end of the show. Frank Jordan is going to be here talking about digestion. Any of you got, you know, after you eat, you'll want to see today's show. Jenny Herbachik is talking about an herb called ashwagandha. Anybody under stress? Dr. John Trowbridge talking about natural things we can do that kill fungus, things like clove. And then in my opening, I asked this question. I, I hope you're sitting down when you see this five or six minute dissertation. Why are our drugs so expensive? Why are they skyrocketing? One reason is the cost of advertising. All that and a whole lot more on today's No to Call. This show is brought to you by the NSC Company. When you can't, Beta Glue can. My name is Doug Kaufman. For the past 40 years, I've dedicated my life and even my career to finding the root cause of disease. Join me and a team of physicians, pharmacists, and scientists. And soon you too will know the cause. Ten, eleven, twelve 11, 12 years ago, I hired this young, good-looking kid to come into the studio here. He's a local guy, and uh, we all fell in love with him. And uh, my son, Evan, actually married his cousin, Katie. Great guy. He's now directing Know the Cause, and he does a very good job. He's one of the editors, and he does all sorts of things. Right. So this segment is dedicated to Chris, okay, who's been with me a long time. Folks, I have reported this to you through the years that four or five times in major research journals out of medical schools, the toenail fungus drug Sporinox just helps cancer patients. It induces angiogenesis, which is cancer can't metastasize. It causes apoptosis or death to cancer. Wait a minute, it's a toenail fungus drug. Yeah, it is. And when I was at Medical City working with Dr. Weekly, it was 80 cents or a dollar a pill. And I used to caution people, where, you know, you're gonna take two of them a couple times a day, so it's gonna be a $40 prescription. Well, okay, I can afford that. Sporinox is now $1,000 for the week to take it. And let's, in dedication of this segment to Chris, let me just kind of teach you a little bit here. Why are drugs so expensive? Drug manufacturers blame high prices on the complexity of biology. <laughs> Why we can't keep these prices low? Because biology is very complex. Government regulations, I'll agree, and high shareholder expectations for high profit margins. This is why I will never put one cent into a drug company, okay? Next, expensive drugs, why? An article in the New England Journal of Medicine started, uh, stated <clears throat> that drug companies buy up, now go with me, big drug companies buy up older, inexpensive, generic drugs. So the generic to um, Sporinox is called itraconazole. So a big company is gonna uh, buy that up, lock out competitors, and raise all the prices, says the New York Times. Folks, that's happening right now because Chris can go in and get itraconazole, you know, for a hundred bucks for a prescription, but no longer because the big companies are gonna buy that up, especially if it's working for cancer. A thousand, heck, it'll be 20,000 before too long. Please know the cause, please take care of your health. Please, folks, behind the scenes, what goes on in science is a bit ugly, I think. And that's why I got up this morning and did my mileage and did my sweating and so forth. That's why I ate an organic grapefruit for breakfast. That's why I took all my supplements. I'm an old guy, but I still feel pretty good. I don't want to get into this fix. And yes, maybe 20 years from now or 10 years, God knows, maybe three years from now, I will have to. Right now, I don't want any part of this. But I think they're expensive because, get this, Pharmaceutical advertising has grown more in the past four years than any other leading ad category. It exceeds $6 billion last year with television picking up the lion's share. Are you one of those people, look, I enjoy maybe once a week, I enjoy watching the news and seeing what's going on. And we just had a horrible storm that rolled through the Dallas area all night and we were kind of up watching TV. Every ad, every show, that's aimed at old people is got pharmaceuticals, pharmaceuticals, pharm, and I just sit there. These are 
actors. They don't take the pills. These are guys with starch white coats that make $3,000 and put a stethoscope around their neck. They have nothing to do with anything except they're actors, okay? And they're recommending this. Isn't that illegal that a non-physician recommends a medication? I guess that question's never been asked, but they do it on TV all the time. They're not doctors. They're actors, okay? But this is interesting. It exceeds $6 billion. Advertising exceeds $6 billion. And it used to be one. And folks, their goal, drug companies' goal, is to make this budget $20 billion a year. Because they know that many of us, especially as we age, are very vulnerable. Few of us are going to get up and exercise. Few of us are going to go on Kaufman's diet and maybe not need all their meds. It's just a given when you're on Medicare, when you're 65 years old, or when you start Social Security at 62 years old, you're going to need their drugs. Why? Because you're going to go to any doctor in the country that was educated by them. These aren't bad companies. These are capitalist drug companies. I just don't want any part of it. And these are doctors who mean the world to people. These are people you have relationships with. You tell your most innermost secrets, right? Just be careful. When you go to a doctor, you're going to get a drug. And finally, I think they're expensive. I love this. Uh, shows such as Major Network Evening News, you know that, CBS Comedy, Mike and Molly, I don't know what that is, ABC's Daytime Drama, I remember General Hospital, when I started in this field 45 years ago, are heavy with drug ads, says Kaiser Health News, and finally this, uh, ads cost billions of dollars. Spending on such commercials grew 62% since 2012, uh, even as ad spending uh, for other products uh, was flat. Wow, 62% in the past few years. They're not going to stop. This is a well-oiled machine. They, they have us sitting there with a beer on our belly watching the news. Hey, honey, that drug's going to stop my hurting. Lay the beer down. No, no, don't lay the beer down. Take this drug. You know where I'm going, folks. You know where my heart is. I want to be healthy for a long, long time. And so far, so good. Friends, joining me right now is a dear friend of mine for far too many years. We used to have dark hair together <laughs> way, way back in the 70s when we met. Dr. John Trowbridge, who's one of the few yeast syndrome. It isn't a symptom, you know, if you've got yeast here. It's in your body. It's a syndrome. He wrote the yeast syndrome in 1986. Six. 30 years ago, it continues to be a bestseller for a reason. Doctors are just now getting it. More importantly, the patients are beginning to understand it through reading his book. What I want to talk about in the next four minutes with Dr. Trowbridge is the poisonous byproducts that some of these fungi make. I think we found a couple hundred of the millions that exist. A couple hundred fungi that make mycotoxins, right? But each fungi might make 10 or 12 or 14 of these things. So we found about or, a thousand or more, or more 50 or more. of them. Yeah, I mean, some of them like fusarium, you know, and, and mm -hmm. some of the others, aspergillus, we're seeing huge number of mycotoxins being made. How do you treat a mycotoxicosis? I know antifungals kill fungus, mm -hmm. but if they've spewed their poison into my body mm -hmm. and now it's arthritis or cancer or some horrible health problem, how do you get rid of the mycotoxins? Well, we should just use a fancy Band-Aid. I mean, isn't that what you get from the doctor generally? Okay. Yes. People say to me, all right, so how long am I going to have to do these things you want this me to diet. do? This okay? diet. I did it a week and I wasn't Exact. I, I didn't show, see any change. And I say, look, we're, we're going to squeeze down on the fungus, that's for sure, because your body has not been able to. But we're going to build up on you. And this is how long it takes to get you better. How much damage has been done on the inside? And that's partly related to how bad was your diet before so that your system was already compromised. Yeast toxin just takes advantage of that. I call it pinch points. If they find a spot where that toxin can interfere, all this starts to back up, none of this is getting made, put those pinch points at the critical junctions, the intersections, yeah. you can stop traffic everywhere. So the deal is, is fixing a mycotoxic illness is keep from having any more come out, okay? Suppress it so, and build you up. Okay, so immunity, you're talking about T and B cell immunity. Everything, not just the, those things. Your, your gut function, your brain function, your circulation, your heart, 
You're kidding. Everything has been affected. And the immune system is here. Isn't that interesting? When you and I started, we thought it was lymph nodes, you mm-hmm. know, and another 80% of our immune mm-hmm. system is in our gut, so start with diet. So what you're saying is, look, feel free to use antifungals. Absolutely. By the way, I just read clove, cinnamon, you know, some of these things that are in the health food store are just as powerful at killing certain fungi and yeast as diflucan. Yes, and, and that's why all those spicy foods have always been very good. Curcumin, yes, the yes, Indian, yes. you know. If it's got a good tangy flavor, it's probably good for fungus. And, oh, I didn't say cancer, but yes, probably. Well, I don't want to get in trouble, you, but you, you know. Don't, I know you don't treat cancer. You treat a patient right. who sometimes recover from syndromes other than you're treating, and that's probably a good thing. <laughs> While we're talking about what you do in your yes. practice, you do something called chelation therapy. Mm-hmm. And I remember the FDA, you know, 100 years ago saying, okay, for lead poisoning, Correct. chelation seems okay. But you say, gosh, we can go beyond oh, absolutely. just lead poisoning. What is chelation absolutely. used for? Chelation is very simple. It's approved medications. There are several different kinds that take out toxic metals. Now, metals are toxic because they go in fast but come out slow and interfere with your biochemistry processes because they replace the good metals. Like, How do we get metals in our body? Oh, food, water, air. It's very simple. Fertilizers that they're using, chemicals. Everything, but especially the food and the water. The, the key thing about getting it in is it's silent. You never notice it. You know, people were getting poisoning from the lead pipes, the water pipes, yeah, yeah. from the lead gasoline, from the air, and from the food and such, never knowing it. So silently these things come in and wear you down over time. But then, of course, you get to see the doctor for your toxic... Me- no, no, you see the doctor for your hypertension. You see the doctor for your blood pressure. You see the doctor for your kidney failure. And all these things have been documented as related to the toxic metals. And yet the doctors don't. Do you see a Blind. time, before you and I say goodbye, be, do you see a time when younger doctors in medical school get courses in toxicology, heavy metals, for uh, chemical fertilizers, birth control pills, antibiotics, statin drugs? Do you see a time when they'll get this? I, I think in the next 30 years, pro- possibly. You're going to be here? Uh, I will be. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that's... It's so fascinating what you do. And tell me before we say goodbye on the air here, how does chelation therapy assist a person with a systemic fungal growth? Very simple. All the toxic metals that are neurotoxic, those are the ones we really worry about, taking your brain away, are immunotoxic because those tissues are very similar. Mm. So your immune system has been damaged. And especially, you know, we've got these mercury fillings in our mouth, and then we get down into the gut, and that's changed by the yeast into organic mercury, and that now is terribly dangerous, and chelation helps to remove that. So what we're doing is removing things that are actively making you older, because aging is a disease happening one day at a time. Yeah, We don't yep. look at it that way, but that's how we have to treat it. Thank you, Dr. John Trowbridge. Uh, by the way, he is in the Houston area. Dear friend, really knows the yeast syndrome. 1-800-FIX-PAIN. I can't believe that. <laughs> 1-800-FIX-PAIN. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. We call them precursors to cancer, things like too much alcohol, too many antibiotics, etc. Jenny Herbacek, Nurse Jenny, believes stress is also a precursor. Watch this. Hi, I'm Jenny Herbacek with The Cancer Connection. Stress is a contributor to cancer. And I'm talking about the kind of chronic stress that's common to so many people because of our worries and our schedules about money and family. And if you're dealing with stress, ashwagandha is a natural herb that can help. In holistic medicine, it's considered a powerful adaptogenic herb, meaning it balances us on a multiple of biological and physiological levels. Ashwagandha is best known for its ability to reduce stress by lowering levels of the hormone cortisol, which gets elevated when we're stressed. The excess stress inhibits our body's ability and the immune system to fight, and that increases our risk of cancer. Ashwagandha has also been shown to fight cancer directly by impeding the growth of new cancer cells. So now you know more about ashwagandha. For Know the Cause, I'm Jenny Herbacek. That guy is Frank Jordan. So you think we're going to talk about your immune system. 
he talks about that a lot. As a matter of fact, he's my go-to guy when I have questions about the immune system. Uh, but Frank today is going to talk about this system. I wonder how many people watching the show, you don't want to talk about this much, but have bowel incontinence. These uh, adult underwear are selling like they're going out of style for urinary incontinence and bowel incontinence. So many of us are running off buying these pills that we swallow, antacids they're called, or so many of us are buying herbs to help with our pain. Frank wants to talk to you about something today that you know about. They're called enzymes. His are unique. Thank you for coming. Right. Well, Doug, I'll start off with digestive enzymes, and then we'll go to enteric or proteolytic enzymes, and that's superzymes from NSC and enzymes, I-M-M-Z-Y-M-E. On digestive enzymes, everybody's taking antacids, the biggest selling pop of pills yep. in the country. But why? Because you get acid indigestion, you get GERD, and it's terrible. It burns, it hurts, et cetera, et cetera. But what causes it? It's caused because you don't have enough digestive enzymes. Now, very quickly, when you chew food, you don't chew it enough. You don't have digestive enzymes because you microwave. You overheat the food we cook. And so many other things, they're not there. So your food gets to your stomach, it's 25% instead of 75% digested. What does your gut do? Your stomach comes out and adds extra acid. That's what it's got. You get too much acid. So what do you do? You get all these different things. So what's the answer? Pop an antacid, which just stops it? No, you need some acid. You don't want to stop it all. You need digestive enzymes. So you supplement this to, to take care of the deficiency. Then your food has adequate digestion where you get the nutrients and you get the other things out of the food. Now, if you don't get enough of these, then you start drawing on proteolytic enzymes. You have uh, protease to break down protein, lipase for fats, and amylase for sugars and carbs. If those aren't sufficient, you draw on other enzymes from your endocrine system that you need for all kinds of things, and so you hurt your hormone balance. Then, if that's not enough, you draw on your white immune cells. People are shocked to know you draw on your immune system, which kills with enzymes. It's in your stomach instead of out there as your immune soldiers. That's why you need the MG beta glucan to go with the digestive enzymes. Also, if you happen to have had uh, gallbladder removal, which I don't know how many million of you have, you need ox bile extract. We added that in here, and then you need good acid, which is betaine HDL, which is also in the big yellow one, mm, the digestive one. enzymes. Very quickly, oral proteolytic, that goes through with enteric coating through the body and gets into the bloodstream. It helps with pain because pain is caused by the amines creating uh, pain, and that's alert. It's like a fire truck that comes up and it's telling your body, we got some problems here. We've got inflammation. Calms that inflammation, calms the amines, and turns out it also calms uh, the pain. Do you have grandkids? Oh, <laughs> yes, I do. Hey, do the cancer cell. I think uh, cancer uh, cells uh, mobilize and go into a sac formation to try and hide from white blood cells eating them up. This is camouflage. If camouflage, uh, cancer cells are 15 to 18 times uh, coated more than a normal cell, and so the immune cells can't detect. Cancer takes over living cells, and so it's not considered non-self a lot of times, and the immune system makes it. The oral proteolytic enzymes, the enzymes, will knock that protein coating out, and that exposes the cancer cells. So the immune cells, then, if you help to normalize and get them up to numbers responding quickly, can see them more easily and hopefully take the cancer out. Now, the beta-glucan is not affecting the cancer. It is affecting uh, the ability of the immune cells to respond. Yeah. But the digestive enzymes for the digestion you need and the oral proteolytic enzymes, enzymes for uh, pain and to reduce inflammation. We're just not, the, the lineup here, of course, is the one I take, the beta-glucan NSC100, beta-glucan uh, 24, the three milligram probiotics. Well, they're critical, 15 billion CFU, you need it to avoid a lot of fungus issues in the gut. Put it with the digestive enzymes and the glucan and you've got a great digestive package. So Frank's company is called NSC. He is my longest term advertiser, been with me since my radio days, back in the right. 1980s and 90s. Uh, the product Immunition is yours free. If you're a brand new viewer, you've never gotten this, this is this one. This is the big boy, the NSC24. You'll get, what, 10, 12 of these mailed to you. You don't even pay postage. Pick up the phone, call that toll-free number. Off it will come, and uh, try it for 10 days, and you'll buy. Thank you, Frank. Good Thank information. You. Thank you.
oh, this is hard for an old guy, but I don't think it's hard for a young guy. This is called a dead lift. Watch Daniel. Balance is so important in any area of your life, in, in your nutrition, uh, in your exercise, in your relationships. So we're gonna work on some physical balance, which I found in my practice always flows over into other areas, uh, to your relationships. Like I said, if you can create you know, the cognitive behavioral patterns for physical balance, it, it sort of just sets the tone for everything else. I want you to go ahead and take your left foot and plant it, get a soft bend in the knee here. Find some sort of a, a mobile object to start with, but we're definitely gonna be going uh, to be not needing it. What I want you to do now is to create that good posture. Shoulders are low, pinch the number two pencil between your shoulder blades, hold on to that imaginary credit card. Now all we're gonna do is just lean over and form a T, okay? Not only are you gonna feel an amazing stretch in the back of your left hamstring, but you're also gonna go ahead and feel a core, an overall core strengthening. So we lean over, feel that amazing stretch in the hamstring, and come back up. Now, the whole point of this is for our balance to get good. So the mind's starting to kind of flow through the kinetic chain, we're feeling it, oh, and we're gonna go ahead and let go of the tree or whatever object we're holding onto. The best way to increase your balance, hold your shoulder blades together, almost you're creating a circle, a circle of, 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 of muscular, connectivity in your in your upper core, your chest. Lean over, flying just like this. Wiggling is excellent. If you're wiggling, whoa, just like that, you're growing, you're getting better. So again, you can hold on to the tree if you need to, but always, every maybe every other one, try to do it without. This is good, it makes you kinda, it's engaging, it makes you almost think about smiling. I mean, imagine that smiling while you're working out. Ooh, yeah, this is fun. It truly is fun, I'm actually having a really good time. So, see how many you can do on your own. Oh, and guess what guys, if you fall, it's not the end of the world. Why are we here? Why are we doing this? Why are we allocating the time to, to invest in ourselves? Because you have one body, and you might as well make it the best that you can because it's gotta last you for 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 years. So invest, create the time, it's worth it. I promise you that it will be uh, something worthwhile to you in next year, in two years, in 10 years. Thanks again for checking us out on Know the Cause. We'll see you next time. Man, I love that guy, Frank Jordan. Here's your superzymes, enzymes, the little boy, three milligram beta glucan, big boy, which I take every day, uh, the NSC 100, and then your probiotics. Uh, thank you, Frank, for being a sponsor of Know the Cause for decades. We really appreciate all of his input. Thank you, Dr. John Trowbridge, for coming in today. Thank you, Nurse Jenny. Most importantly, folks, thank you for telling your friends about this little health show, the little health show that could know the cause. See you next time. God bless. Bye-bye.